Now today we're going to do some sensor work on the Honda S2000. If you've been following along, you know that we recently reinstalled the fenders, we did the injectors, bearings, things like that, but now I'm sort of stuck because I'm waiting on vendors. Vendors to complete the seats, uh, the top, so I'm sort of really have nothing to do on the car until those things are done. So I figured I might as well go through the sensors. Uh, and you can save a ton of money if you can diagnose these things yourself. So I don't really want to talk anymore. Let's just jump right over to it. Today we're going to do the map sensor. Now fortunately, getting access to the map sensor is incredibly, incredibly easy. Now the first thing you want to do if you do have trouble with a map sensor, you have the check engine light for example, you want to make sure and verify, let me just zoom in here, that you have a good connection at the harness connector. And that's because I believe it was 2004, Honda had a, uh, a bulletin regarding the harness connector and they actually made a little adapter that you were allowed to uh, place a zip tie on here to make sure it's incredibly tight and that the harness connector is fully engaged in the sensor. So in other words, you want to make sure that it's not something like this, okay? You want to hear that snap to know that's fully engaged. Now I'm going to really show this through two different techniques. One is without a scan tool and the other one is with a scan tool. Now this is a very inexpensive scan tool. This goes for $40 on Amazon and I'll include a link in the description box below. I've had this for years. It's terrific for doing just very basic things. Specifically we need to do something called data stream. We need to see the data stream from the vehicle's computer. Now for 2000 and 2001 S2000s, that data link is on the passenger side. I believe 02 was the first year it switched over to the driver's side. So make sure you find this port. It's called the OBD2 port. So now all that I'm doing is taking the ignition key and turning it to the on position. No need to crank the car, start the car, not yet at least. Just turn it on to the on position. Now, if you're not familiar with scan tools, ultimately we're just getting a reading specifically from the map sensor, and we need data stream to do that. Now, you can do this without a scan tool, and this is something I showed many years ago on a Nissan Maxima, but this is just a very, very big time saver. But if you're curious on how to do that, I'll include a link in the description box below. But ultimately, you find the map sensor, so intake manifold absolute pressure. Choose that, and we see a reading here of 100 kilopascals, and that's a good reading. I don't have a trouble code for the map sensor. I'm just doing this as a how-to, but let me show you how you can manipulate this value and test the sensor. So the first thing you want to do is verify that you do not have a wiring issue. In other words, the sensor can be perfectly fine, but maybe you have a problem with the wiring or even a problem with the vehicle's computer. So I turned off the ignition key, and actually remove the key from the ignition and now I'm just removing the harness connector from the sensor and if you take a look you have really let me put this down here this is easy to do don't worry if this is uh, getting you a little worried very very easy to do here so you have three terminals what you want to do is just just grab a paper clip cut it in half and I'm placing the first paper clip in terminal number one okay then I have another terminal number two, and I'm placing the other paper clip here. Very easy. You can purchase something called a jumper wire, but this, this works perfectly fine, okay? Now, what I have are two alligator clips. Not necessary, just makes the job very, very easy. Let me actually move the camera back. It's a little difficult to get everything on one shot. But ultimately, what you want to see is a reading here of 5 volts. And this is just simply a digital multimeter. Many of you have these. If you do not, again, this is $20 off Amazon. And you want the volts DC rating. Okay? So turn your multimeter to volts DC. And then I'm just grabbing these alligator clips and placing one lead directly to the black lead of the multimeter and then the other lead will go to red of the multimeter. Now you can simply just take the leads and touch 
the paper clips. I'm just doing this because it just frees up my hands. And then I'm going to turn the ignition key. Okay, so everything's hooked up. So now I'm going to turn the ignition key back on and we should see roughly 5 volts on the multimeter. Okay, let's see what we have. 4.7 volts. Let me zoom in just in case you can't see that. Whoops. Okay, so that verifies that we are getting power. Let me just turn off the ignition. So that verifies that power is getting to the harness connector. Now if you do this test and you do not get a reading, what I would suspect is it's probably something with the wiring at this point. Now what I mean by that is don't forget these cars are getting older. In this case it's 21 years old and who knows who worked on your car before you. In other words, some techs are sloppy, they're, they're in a rush, whatever the case may be, and instead of the maintenance work they did in the past, instead of pulling from the body, a lot of times they pull from the wiring. And what that does is it dislodges the connection inside the harness connector. They're really just little bullets, uh, bullet type connectors, and they can, if you tug on this too hard, then power cannot get to these leads right here. So what you want to do is the same test, but instead of taking your reading from up front, you pierce the back and I'll, I'll find a link for you guys where you can purchase jumper wires to pierce the back of the wiring without hurting it and you just do the same test see if you get a reading and chances are you you will if that's the case then you really just want to make sure that you press down push the harness connector make sure you hear a snapping noise if you still have trouble you can typically you can if you look hard enough you can find a whole new wiring harness at the end uh, even someone parting out, I see them all the time on Facebook Marketplace, guys just parting out their S2000s. A lot of times you could just, if you had to, just clip one off and then solder it back on onto your car. But ultimately, you just want to check the wiring, okay? Very, very important. So now we're really going to test the sensor. Different ways you could do this, but in my opinion, this is just the quickest way to do it. Paper clip cut in half, okay? I have one lead going right there on the left. The other lead will go right smack in the middle. And then I'm just using my alligator clips. And I'll give you a different screenshot in a second just to show you precisely how I'm hooking this up. But ultimately I have one alligator clip going smack in the middle. And what I'm doing is once, it place, once I place the alligator clip over the prong in the middle of the map sensor, I push down the boot so it's completely covered. Okay? So just like this. Right in the middle, push down the boot, and then hook this up to the middle prong, okay? And then the other one, the other lead is going to the right prong in the map sensor. Okay, just like this. Now, well, let me, I just want to make sure these guys don't touch. Really, you want to use jumper wires. I'm doing this because many of you probably don't have them, and that's why I'm using a paper clip. But just like this, okay? Now, let's jump back in the vehicle. So once again, we have the scan tool. The ignition key is on, okay? Make sure the key is on. Go down to data stream. And now you should see a very low value for the map sensor, okay? And now we have zero. Before it was 100, 101, now it's zero. So now that tells us that the map sensor is working. If you don't see a change in the values here, the map sensor is bad. And then one final test, I'm leaving the middle one still plugged in. And instead of testing the middle and the right prong, I'm just testing, whoops, hold on. I'm just testing the middle and the left prong on the multimeter. Now you, the other flip side is you can plug this in to the map sensor and just probe it from the back. But now we should see, hold on, we should see a very, very high reading on the uh, scan tool. Here we go, data stream, select items,
and now we have 176, okay? So this map sensor is in working condition. If you do this, the values don't change. You just need to replace the map sensor. Now sometimes the hardest part of this job is removing the sensor without stripping the fasteners. If that happens, your best bet is probably just a Dremel. Slice it, make a, a really just one mark, and then you can use a flathead. But this is a 10 inch Craftsman screwdriver and I'm going to place my entire weight on it, or a good amount of weight on it, I should say, and then slowly turn it. Okay? Slowly turn it. There you go. Now my recommendation is replace this with a factory part. Do not go cheap, no name, map sensor. These are not too expensive because they're also used on the Honda Civics and the Honda Accords, so they're not very expensive, but go with the factory part. Okay, some guys also clean them out or they may even tap them sometimes. Now if you want to clean these, don't use something like fuel injection or carburetor cleaner, you'll kill it. There, uh, You can actually buy electronic uh, it's a spray, but for specifically electronics, and it won't hurt it. And Honda actually has one specifically for, for electronics, but uh, you can even make sure it's not clogged in here, as well as that the, the little O-ring is in good shape. But that's all you do. Once you have the new part, you just slap it back on. No need to overdo it because it's a plastic housing. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Just make sure it clicks. That's the main thing. You want to make sure it clicks. Okay. Again, if you want to go that extra mile, you can grab a zip tie and make sure it's really on there. But that's all it takes. So that's what it takes to test and replace the map sensor. The big caution I would state is just be careful with the fasteners because they're very, very soft. Use high quality tools, put some weight on it, and you should be okay. That being said, I have the top coming in roughly in a week and a half or two weeks with the installer. It's actually a mobile unit from Robin, so they are going to replace the top. Uh, and the seats hopefully will be almost done by then, and we can finally take this thing on the road. So my plan is, if you have an S2000 and you have a check engine light, uh, I'm going to really try to get these videos out pretty quickly. So by the time the car is done, these sensor videos are wrapped up. Okay, so that's my plan. But I hope you guys enjoy these. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.